Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Well, I have such a special interview. I want everybody to just sit down and relax. Uh, James Keach wrote a documentary, and the documentary is on Alzheimer's. It's called Turning Point. And once you just, you know, turn it on, well, I don't want you to turn it on. I happen to have seen it, an advanced view of it, but I want you to go to the movies, and it's going to come. It's a, a documentary, as I said, and it's going to be here for the Fort Lauderdale Film, in, you know, Film Festival. But the work that James put into this, is it James or Jim? I'm sorry. What it, it's James. It's James. Okay. What James yeah. put into this was phenomenal. I learned so much I had no idea about. I mean, research and we always hear about, oh, the medication's so expensive. Well, if you would just see what went into this, you would understand. It was, it was just, I think it was a great thing for the whole pharmaceutical industry, frankly. <laughs> they should all worship you. So. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, I think it's not so much about the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, it's, it's research scientists. What, right. What the, the intention of the movie was not to... Um, laud pharmaceutical companies or any business entity it was to show what we're up against with alzheimer's and that the people that are on the front lines are the uh the scientists and the caregivers and of course those people that have the disease and that so often people think of pharmaceutical companies they forget that that you know until 1940 or whenever it was uh, before louis pasteur and the soft vaccine you know that Came, came with his vaccine, we only lived half the time we're living now. And it was through drug, drug discovery that made our lives longer. And uh, so that's what the movie's about. The movie's about science. The movie's about scientists and about the heroism of those people that go to work every day, knowing that they're probably not going to discover the cure for, for, this, for this particular thing, but they're going to take us one step further down the line. And, uh, and I also, you know, I tried to be fair to and include the fact that some people can't afford drugs and the FDA it was a hopefully it's a complete movie and it shows the whole canvas of what we're dealing with it did and what i was impressed with and i hope it's still correct they did find out that people with very early alzheimer's or very early dementia can be helped yeah what people can be helped you know lifestyle is a is a big thing that uh, uh, we can all do to in decrease our chances of of Alzheimer's. Of course, if you're born with the APOE gene to have uh, early onset Alzheimer's, that's not a good thing. And uh, um, there was a study called the Diane study where everybody in this one town, they were all related to each other genetically. Uh, they all got Alzheimer's very early. Um, but um, that's a genetic uh, uh, and that's a genome study, but the the Alzheimer's that most people are going to get is going to be uh, the type of Alzheimer's that comes with aging. And one out of two people that hit the age of eighty or eighty five will get Alzheimer's um, or some some form of dementia. And you can decrease your chances by your lifestyle and it's what you eat. It's getting exercise, and you know it's simply what's good for your heart is good for your brain. And uh, um, yeah, and I believe you need to laugh a lot. So. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. You need to laugh a lot and hug a lot and, and see good documentaries like this. Not too, too many people are just Thank glued you. to television and, and watching in, inane things. But when something like this comes along, it is very important. I wanted to send what I had to everybody. I said, no, you can't do that. You have to wait for people to go to the movies. And do you, I'm sure you're hoping that it's so well received that it's going to play all over the country and win an award. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, we, we've just been getting support from uh, Bill Gates. Oh, good. Uh, and Bill is getting getting behind the, the distribution uh, aspect of the film. But his big uh, thing is, and, and ours is as well, is to get people into clinical trials, you know. Mm -hmm. those, those are also he heroes, you know. Most of us don't realize that, you know, in order, in order to develop these the cures for these things we need to have people involved in clinical trials and and uh so the gates group is 
very excited about it. Um, Mr. Gates' dad has Alzheimer's, and oh, he to, yeah, he oh. realizes how serious this is, and yeah. So, and and um, we've been getting a lot of interest from uh, a group. Well, Bright Focus is one of the uh, organizations that is also helping with the distribution of the film, and Bright Focus has given over a hundred million dollars to Alzheimer's research, and and they're also. Uh, involved with the distribution and and um, they give grants to research scientists and uh, you know I, I the the audience should understand too that the film is not dry and scientific that's what it's it's a uh, it's an entertainment film actually yes. it's, a, it's a it's a mystery as you go through it mm-hmm. so I think yeah and uh, no it is it yeah. is but I what I liked about it it was very scientific which I like. But also very humane, you know, because of all the interviews with some of the people who, you know, were elders, and they, and that was really very, very good. And 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 I really have so many questions though that I couldn't ask, you know, while the documentary is going on. So when you're there, will you then after the film is shown, will you be there to take questions? I'm going to do my best to be there. Yes, um, and um, Nancy Lynn will be there, one of the executive producers of the film, and. Uh, and I believe that there will be some uh, uh, doctors will be there. So. Right. And what's what we're finding, though, is that there are now there's so many walks for Alzheimer's. There's so many people, you know, contributing and doing what they can. But I'm very hopeful. And, and even though at the very end, and I don't really want to give the, the film, I don't want to give it away. But at the very end, the scientists were very hopeful, They you know, for yeah. what they've been working on and because that's what their their um, work is. It's you put one foot in front of the other, but this is affecting, as you said, the statistics were amazing. Why don't you just tell yeah. the statistics a little bit while you're on the show? Well, the, the one out of two people who hit the age of eighty will get Alzheimer's or dementia. It's a tsunami, you know. Yeah. So I mean, the the obviously the we're staying alive a lot longer because of um, scientists because of science. And um, that's the good news. And the bad news is, now that we're staying alive a lot longer, Alzheimer's is now uh, coming in because the brain is not used to living this long. <laughs> and, uh, and and so certain things start happening in the body. So um, it 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 will it will break. Uh, it, it will cost more than the defense budget, you know, to uh, to finance this. And until we get a something to slow this down it's, it's going to break it could really ruin the economy seriously it's not it's not a joke and i think most people think well this is an old person's disease well <clears throat> it is and it isn't because early onset happens to people in their 50s and and what young people need to realize is or younger people is that they're going to be taking care yep. of their parents their brothers their sisters their mothers their fathers and and uh so it it, inf- it 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 impacts not just one person because the other thing about people with Alzheimer's is they can't go out and lobby for themselves because they've lost their memory, they've lost the ability to do that. So the people that have got to lobby for them are the people that don't have Alzheimer's and that it hasn't hit yet, and that they have also got to instead of building more bombers, you know, and sending mm. people down to the border, mm. five thousand troops, one person, two, yeah, right. You know, to for every three hundred and forty of those um, those folks trying to come here, right? The, the, I'm, I'm not I'm not politically speaking against the, uh, uh, the president. I'm just saying it's a it's a misspending of money, is what I'm speaking against. I and agree. I, I agree. I believe that you know we need less less uh, of that kind of stuff and more focus on this. This is this is the the, the this is the invasion. Mm. he's talking about mm-hmm. this is the real invasion that's and very well put it's, it's going to bring bring us down the one know, thing as a, that as a nation I, yeah i don't know if this if this was in the film i can't remember now because i did watch it. it was very late last night did it talk about the short-term memory and the long-term how a lot of alzheimer's um patients um i don't remember the, doing uh, that. Uh, P- pasquale the fellow in the film that yeah. has alzheimer's yeah the, the wonderful man yeah he can remember short. Uh, he, he it does t- talk about the differences, but it says it right up front. And you know, when, when he can't remember, you see his short-term memory failing him immediately when he can't remember three words. Yes, yes. You know, uh, 
but, Apple table pin. Yeah, right? but but you know, a lot so. of people, right? A lot of people can remember years ago, uh, and that at least if they could just continue to remember that, then that's kind of a different influx of influx of Alzheimer's. Eventually, that may leave also. It's a different part of the brain. Mm-hmm. You know, the brain the brain has different. You know, there's the part of the brain that is motor skills. Mm -hmm. There's a part of the brain that's emotional. There's a part of the brain that's language. So, you know, for example, in Glenn Campbell's case, he could remember music, but he couldn't remember lyrics. Hmm. He could remember, he could remember all the the notes because that was, that was also one of his first languages. And they've discovered things like people who were born in Europe and then come to America and their first language, let's say is Czechoslovakian. And they come here and they don't speak it for years. They, they strangely revert back to that first language. Oh, and, uh, interesting. I mean, the the yeah. brain, it's, it's absolutely fascinating, the, the, the brain and how it works. And, and um, yeah. So. Well, I just want to tell everybody, I hope you've been listening and didn't just tune in, but we will be putting this on our website also. Uh, it'll go on YouTube. But let me just tell you, I'm talking to James Keach, K-E-A-C-H, and he is the... Uh, I guess we call you, you, are you the producer, director? What are you of the documentary Turning that's Point? That's what I am, the filmmaker. The filmmaker, yeah. right, the filmmaker, and yeah. that wasn't easy. How long did it take you? Uh, a couple of years. A couple of years. But it, 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 when I got in, I, I did a movie years ago called Walk the Line. Yes. Which, I <laughs> and and I, after Walk the Line, um, the fellow who was producing Glenn Campbell's music and he was also producing my son Johnny, who's now 22, playing, still playing music, named after John Cash. Um, uh, came to me and said, "Would you do a movie about Glenn Campbell?" And uh, my partner Trevor Albert and I said at the time, um, uh, "We've already done a movie, uh, you know, a biopic." No, no, this isn't a biopic. This is just a little concert thing he's going to do for seven weeks, and he's got Alzheimer's. And uh, for me, hearing the word Alzheimer's, I went. That doesn't sound like it's very going to be very entertaining. <laughs> and I don't know that I want to do that. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Glenn came over, and I met Glenn, and Glenn walked in. And there was Johnny with his guitar, walking across the living room, and Glenn said, "Hey, I play guitar. You want me to show you something?" And Johnny oh. goes, yes, "Sir, let me." See. Oh. And so Glenn just Glenn shreds the guitar, and and you know just plays incredible stuff. And he said, "That was taught to me by my uncle Boop. Practice that, you'll get good." Johnny goes into his bedroom. Oh. Then he says, uh, and then Kim, his wife, was there. And, and uh, uh, Glenn goes, you know, when a man finds a good woman, he finds a good thing. I found me a good thing, he points to Kim. And Kim oh. says, Glenn, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about your Alzheimer's. And Glenn says, I don't got no Alzheimer's. Uh. I've got part-timers. <laughs> and oh, that's <laughs> and then Johnny comes walking back across the living room with his guitar. And Glenn says, hey, I play guitar. You want me to show you something? Yeah. Yeah. So I got to see it all. So I fell in love with Glenn at that moment. I said, okay, we'll do it. It's only going to be five weeks of shooting. Yeah, yeah. It turned out to two and a half years. Yeah. Wow. 171 shows. And Amazing. so for the last seven years, I've been working on brain related films, uh, you know? And so Glenn kind of led me down this path. And I guess I was supposed to, to, to go down this road and try and take whatever filmmaking skills I have and, and get the world involved with this because it's really important that the people that are listening to to us talk right now um, get active and try and do something to help stop this thing because this is serious. I mean, this is and you know. Yes, it is. Yeah. My husband yeah. lived. He just he died a year and a half ago at the age of ninety three, and he was brilliant. He was writing books. He never had Alzheimer's. He did have macular degeneration, which you know you talked about a little bit there too, but. Um, but and then you know, and I've had different family members. My grandmother never ah. had it; she lived to be ninety-five. So you know, but but one thing you said, and I'm now starting to go to sleep eat earlier. I I'm one of those one o'clock, two o'clock. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to sleep at eleven, and I'm trying yeah. to exercise. All the things that you you know you they brought up in the film you brought up, but those are the kinds of things that people can also start doing. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I know that you're probably very busy, too. And how old are you, may I ask? I'm 70. Oh, 70. You're just a kid. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a kid, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm 80, so that's okay. And I run a company with my magazine and my radio, so 
I don't know any of this. Of course, we forget words from here and there, but not what an Alzheimer's person is. And so we no. have to just keep moving along with it and trying to help spread the word, right? Get it out there. Right. And everybody, you know, if you don't see another movie this year, be sure to see Turning Point. And, and it's, uh, you'll be able to see it actually at the film festival in Fort Lauderdale. If not, hopefully we're going to see it playing all over the country. And I hope you win the documentary award, uh, you know, at the end of the year. Well, I do too. That would be great. <laughs> that would be. Well, you've put, you spent so much time doing this. So uh, let's go back to this. Now, um, the scientists in there, I know that we featured um, a couple of, there were a couple of women, the one woman who is so strong in Re there. Risa Sperling. Yeah. Re Re Risa Sperling from uh, uh, Harvard. She's a professor at Harvard and, yep. and uh, um, the Brigham uh, Hospital up in uh, Massachusetts. Uh-huh. So it was it hard was it difficult to get those people to to be in it? I mean, did you did you no. have to, no they they were happy. No, here. because they'd all seen the Glenn Campbell film. Uh, and they all knew that I was real serious about my work and mm -hmm. and you know, so they were very excited to to be part of it, you know. I mean, because most most of the time the, the, their stories are never told. Yeah. You know, their, their stories aren't told. And obviously she you, uh, just an interesting side note. She actually, uh, when I started talking with her, she started out to be an actress, and she and Kim Campbell oh, no. did, were Rockettes together. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. And she oh. was a squirrel, and Kim was like a, a little fox in, in a Christmas show in oh. New York. You know. Oh, my. And, and Risa said, I don't think I'm going to make it in show business. I love it, so I'm going to go back to medical school and become a doctor. And she went to Harvard, and of course she's brilliant woman. Isn't that, and, great? Uh, isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. I had yeah. another experience. I had a, a lady who was um, very much of an outgoing organizer, and she got involved with an Alzheimer's organization here, and then she got involved with the National Organization for Alzheimer's, and she was able to actually have all these walks from Palm Beach County all the way down to Miami, and she was doing a lot of things smart woman i think she was in her 50s and she would be on my radio show and one time she was on the radio show she's still alive and she was on the radio show and said anita i don't know if i can do this anymore why her name's dotty carson i'm going to make sure she sees this too and she said because i think i have early alzheimer's i said what are you talking about she said yeah she said i think so i'm now going through some uh trials you know and she got very involved and because she's so smart they put her into some very big things. So she actually can manage what she has very well. And Dottie Carson is a great spokesperson. Uh, she was uh, at one of the big seminars on, on all this. So I am definitely going to put her in, you know, uh, let her know that this is coming because she's one of those kind of people that you were talking about clinical trials. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, so people now are fighting. They're trying to figure out what to do. And and it's, uh, you know, the other thing, I like the laughing where the the gentleman, you know, he, he couldn't remember, but his wife says, don't worry about it, honey. It's okay. And, you know, don't cry or you can cry, but we're going to do this together. And that was the nice part. The one thing that I really resent is when some young young, young family members don't understand and they'll say, you just asked me that question. Don't ask me again. Or, Don't you remember yeah. mom died? Oh, I want to go crazy when they do that. That, that See, they, they, we need to have a lot of education on this also. Well, that's what Patty, uh, uh, Dr. Hamburg, Peggy Hamburg, talks about her, about her mom. She was the head of the FDA, her mom, at Christmas with a package. Yeah. And she would wrap and unwrap the package. Yeah. And yeah. Say, over and over again. She said that was, she looked at that as being wonderful. Yeah. Right. But you see, people, that's why film, you know, if they, people watch the film, they'll understand it. They'll understand what they're, they'll understand that these people have a disease, that this, they can't help it. This is not, their their brains are doing that. It's not, it's not, it's involuntary what's going on in their brain. It's not voluntary. They're not trying to, to not remember. They, you know? No, right. <laughs> that, that, well, the other, you know, it's, I you know. just want to say, when you're just saying this about, because you were saying something about music when you talked about Glenn Campbell and all, but 
When I first got my master's degree in gerontology, I started visiting a lot of places that were, were housing some of the people with Alzheimer's. There weren't a lot of places, and they said anybody that had any of this, maybe it's Alzheimer's. They didn't even know what they were talking about. But I'll never forget one place. When I went there, there were about five or six people, and they definitely didn't know what they were doing, but they were dancing. They were having so much fun, it didn't matter. And that's when I decided it doesn't matter. If they're in another place, it's okay. Let them be where they are. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's an attitude, though. You see, some people take it so personally. Oh, he doesn't remember who I am. He won't know my child. Well, okay, but it's not about you. It's about them. No, but, you know, it's like Glenn, well, in, in the case of Glenn, he, he knew who I was, not by my name, but by the, the light in my eyes, and, and he could tell by my beard. He knew, Aww. he'd always go, and he'd come over and he'd touch my beard. Aww. And at the, end of, at the end of that film, if your audience you know, hasn't seen Glenn Campbell, I'll be me, it's pretty good. And he's unbelievable if you're, you know, an unbelievable man. But he, the light, you know, he can, all of a sudden he remembered, I, see, I said, Glenn, thanks for doing this movie, and I wanted to see what he would say. He yeah. Said, no, I'm glad I ran into you, or you ran into me, because Glenn <laughs> wanted the 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 world to know uh. what Alzheimer's looked like. Up, so does Pasquale, the guys in the film. So do all the they pe- want people to understand that this is not a, the, the, there should be no shame in this game. People can't help it when they don't remember, right? You know, and it does, and it's really hard on the caregiver. There's no question. The caregivers are totally heroic, but they have to understand this is what they're up against. And, you know, that, that, that these people can't help. And a lot of times they, they need help. And that's the other thing that, that, that the, the government needs to, and our, and our communities need to do, is we need to help one another. You know, we can't be living in our silos and, and pretend, you know, and be, be indifferent and apathetic to the plight of others. It's just, it, it, it's so pathetic to me and sad that yes. that's where, where we end up. You know. Let me tell you another interesting, I've been doing this for so long, I'm trying to remember some things. I had a home health agency I was very friendly with, and she brought the caregiver, the woman of an Alzheimer's gentleman. And the woman was on, we were talking, and she gave this experience. She said that she was with her husband there in the house, and uh, he said, you have to leave now because my girlfriend's coming. And so his wife, who understood a lot, said, well, it's okay, I'll wait till she comes. No, no, you can't be here when she comes. Okay. So she kind of disappeared a little bit, and then she went there later. And he said, so where have you been? I've been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> but she was great about it. See, that's what I loved about yeah. it. She loved him so much that that's how she dealt with this. Not what it was for her, but what it was for him. Exactly. Exactly. Sandra Day O'Connor is a, uh, an incredible story. She left the Supreme Court yes. to take care of her husband. Yep. And her husband actually found a girlfriend at the care facility. It didn't bother her. Right. You know, and then, and now she's apparently got Alzheimer's herself. But it's just, I don't know. She's a, she's a very heroic woman, but the caretakers are, you know, ill. They, a lot of times the caretakers get more burned out than the people that actually have the Alzheimer's, too. Of course, too, so, of course. Well, know, the worst it's, thing it's, is it's when a, yeah, when they roam, you know, when they can't. When they yep. when, when you have to make sure, and you don't want to put them in prison, but you want to somehow make sure all the doors are locked. And I'll tell you another story. I went to another very, very sophisticated years ago. They did. They were doing so much research. And when I walked in, there was a whole wall of locks, you know, door locks all over. What are those for? Well, because they want to get out. Then, so they play with the locks. Huh? Isn't that interesting? Wow. <laughs> I know. Wow. That's right, because they see that as a way to get out the door, and they just go and open the door, close it. Yeah, yeah. All these locks on the wall. When, well, there have been some very the Miami Jewish Home for the Aged here in South Florida was way ahead of most people. They had like a whole area where they did all sorts of things that were very unusual. Um, they, they really are very good. They, they had the money for the research and all many years ago. Um, and that's really what it requires. So hopefully, though, and I'm very hopeful, we're going to find 
some things that maybe won't be perfect. Maybe it'll be a little bit like cancer. I just yeah, uh, it'll be a it'll be a cocktail. Ultimately. Yes. Well, something that that didn't make it go away. You had to keep dealing with it, but maybe there'll be something that'll help, that'll lessen the seriousness. You know, the the, the seriousness of it, and and yeah, I just believe we're going to find that, don't you? Yeah, I do. I do, especially if we support research research in science. Yeah, I do. That's right. That's where the money should go. I think, and I'm I just, I'm going to say it sounds political, but. All the 1% of all the rich people that got that, give it all back, and let's put it into research. How about that? That's a good one, isn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I, would, I think that's a good idea. Right. Come on, everybody, because it could be you or it could be your loved one. Come on. You don't need to have a bigger yacht or a bigger home. Anyway, I'm not going to do this anymore, but, but I do agree okay. with you. <laughs> I do agree. Uh, we do have to have uh, a lot more money uh, put into Alzheimer's. And I am very, very uh, hopeful at my age and your age. Let's get it on, right? Right. Absolutely. So, you know, James, I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for doing that documentary. You are a hero. Well, I don't know about being a hero, but I'm, I'm blessed that I can, I'm able to make films that hopefully will make a difference. Right. Well, I certainly enjoyed talking to you and look forward to meeting you. Too. You too. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Bye. Okay, have a good day. You too. Bye.